now the next chapter which we are going to discuss is in respect of the appeals uh, intentionally we are going to discuss this chapter up to the exactly up to the trials because uh, all the trials were concluded with the uh, the last aspect with reference to the either judgment of the conviction and acquittal so in order to uh, understand the link and to understand the uh, in, uh, in order to the continuity of the link that is after the judgment and acquittal either conviction or acquittal let us start discussion to directly go to the the uh, next chapter that is chapter number 24 of the crpc all as the appeals section 372 to section 394 of the crpc uh, deals with this the provisions of appeals to introduce this chapter let me tell you why this particular chapter has been inserted in the uh, crpc because the person who delivered the judgment whether it is a session court whether it is a judicial magistrate first class or the metropolitan magistrate it's a human being and then there is a chance of mistake and therefore in order to cure that mistakes or in order to scrutinize that judgment the higher courts are there now while discussing the first chapter itself we discuss the hierarchy under the criminal that is crpc and we are aware that the supreme court of india is the highest court in india so far as criminal law is concerned of course for the civil law also then there are high courts in the states then in a state again divided into session division and there are session courts and thereafter in other than metropolitan area we were aware there is a chief judicial magistrate additional chief judicial magistrate judicial magistrate first class in some of the states states judicial magistrate second class whereas in case of the uh, metropolitan area after the session courts there is a chief metropolitan magistrate additional chief metropolitan magistrate and metropolitan magistrates are there so uh, why we are discussing the hierarchy because uh, in order to understand the 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 stages of the appeals and therefore this hierarchy is most important now the intention of legislature for putting the appeal is to just to scrutinize the judgments there are two aspects one is statutory provisions and secondly the constitutional that is inherent rights guaranteed by the constitution of india so the provisions of appeal it is a combination of the crpc and the constitutional provisions and therefore when we will discuss the topics of the appeal uh, you will realize especially when we will going to discuss the the provisions for appeal under the uh, in a supreme court of india as well as the high courts then you realize uh, the statutory provisions as well as the provisions from the that is the articles from the constitutions these two similar kinds of provisions play vital roles and therefore while discussing the uh, the appeals provision firstly we will discuss the statutory provisions and when we will discuss the appeal to the high courts or the supreme court we will discuss the statutory provisions plus the constitutional provisions so it's a combination of both now as i have already told you that it's a it's a it's a provisions made by the statute or legislature in order to understand the the criteria that is that is with reference to the subject to the correction because judgment is delivered by the human being of course we have already discussed the various stages provided under the trials and and uh, the especially the the other aspect is provided under the appeal is that in order to avoid the uh, you know the miscarriage of justice and to curtail the mistakes or in order to the cure the mistakes or to clear the mistakes made by the lower court the provisions are appeal as provided under the crpc now with intention with this intention uh, we are going to discuss the provisions under the crpc but before that uh, just to understand the uh, the idea behind the appeal you will you must know that recently in the year 2009 a oh, very important change and very major change has been carried out so far as the chapter of the uh, appeal is concerned especially with reference to section 372 because uh, by inserting the proviso under section 372 in the year 2009 the parliament has provided the powers to the victim also to file an appeal 
either uh, that of course during the course of lecture we'll discuss the power given by the legislature to the victim to file an appeal either it is inadequate again the inadequate punishment or if the accused person is acquitted then not only the state government but the victim is also aggrieved person and therefore there are special provisions made to file an appeal so uh, with all other provisions we are going to focus on these provisions also because earlier earlier only there are two categories uh, if suppose it's a state case either the prosecution will file the case if it is acquittal judgment or if there is a conviction then it is a accused person who is aggrieved against the judgment he will file the judgment so based upon this two aspects now this the third aspect has been inserted by the amendment 2009 that is victim now this is this is because of the uh, the victimology we are already known therefore the provision the provision of section 372 is most important we will focus on that itself and 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 with this background now let us discuss what is this process of appeal now nowhere under the crpc uh, the word appeal has been defined but if you go through the ordinary meaning it's it's a it just just an uh, rights given to the accused person or the to the aggrieved person rather to file uh, to correct the judgment given by the lower court now there is a very famous dictionary we call as webster dictionary uh, which try to define the word appeal it says it means a legal proceeding by which the case is brought in the higher court and uh, for the review of the judgment given or the decision given by the lower court so if you go through the wordings used under the definition it simply says it's a legal proceeding so it's a continuation of the legal proceeding now this is most important this particular aspect will be discussed with the help of the two three judgment because there is a clash whether the appeal is a continuation of the the trial or not that we'll discuss and whether the uh, the any other order passed by the lower court which will be continued see the under cpc we have already discussed cpc we have discussed that yes it's a continuation but whether in the criminal courts whether the appeal is a continuation of the trial that aspect we'll discuss because see the webster dictionary it says it's a legal proceedings and to what sense it's brought before the higher court so it's a, a brought before the higher court for what purpose to review the judgment so already judgment or decision is there and that judgment is to be reviewed by the higher court and therefore i as i have already told you you should know the hierarchy first and once you understand the hierarchy that is the hierarchy of the criminal courts then it's very easy to understand the the provisions for the appeal under the uh, crpc now second aspect after this definition uh, you must bear in the mind that the appeal under the crpc is a statutory provisions that is the statutory remedy granted by the statutes and therefore unless so is it not a, it is not an as of right of course it is part as of right but unless the appeal is in within the limitation within the prescribed format provided by the law then and then then and then only appeal is live otherwise it's not an as of right this aspect we will discuss because see uh, as i have already told you uh, that the particular chapter especially after the trials uh, you can take the judgment of, topic of the judgment appeal review revision or the charges you will realize there is no specific provisions provided like uh, one section by other section all the provisions are scattered in the particular chapters and you have to collect each and every and we have to discuss separately and therefore in a, in order to understand the provisions of the appeal uh, and to get and to understand in the easy manner uh, we have divided this portion of the appeal in three aspects because uh, the process of appeal again the process of appeal and the chapter of appeal as i already discussed it is amended in the year 2009 similarly recent amendment in the year 2018 uh, specifically uh, with reference to the appeal so far as the offenses uh, like 376 and all these offenses there is special provisions made of course we will discuss during the course of lecture but one of the aspect is provided if there is appeal against the uh, either the conviction or acquittal judgment under section 376 a b c d e e a d a then appeal has to be decided within the 6 month which is not available in ordinary appeal so we will have to take care all this all this the uh, the provisions of appeal now so far as the uh, rules of the appeal in these three cases are concerned please bear in the mind 
if you go through the hierarchy of the courts uh, of, of the criminal courts three courts are deals with the appeal that is the supreme courts of india that is which is the highest court then the high courts and the session court of course it includes additional session court and assistant session court also which will discuss but please bear in the mind the chief judicial magistrate additional chief judicial magistrate judicial magistrate first class judicial magistrate second class are in metropolitan cases chief metropolitan magistrate or metropolitan magistrate they are nothing to do with this chapter they are nothing to deal with deal with the provisions of the the uh, appeals however the judgment or order passed by these courts can be entertained or can be decided can be scrutinized by these three appellate courts that is the session court addition session court assistant court or the high court and session court you should understand this and and you are aware the the supreme court of india it being the highest appellate court in india it's having some other other of course by the crpc the powers is given it's a highest appellate court the constitution also given certain powers like for example the extraordinary original criminal jurisdiction is with the supreme court now power as yes, that is we call as the under article 136 under article 134 there are ample power given to the the supreme court of india same is in case of the the high courts in india but the only article change that is article 226 or article 227 and extra powers with the high court you are aware if there is a judgment of the conviction that is death sentence is passed by the the session court then unless that that sentence is confirmed by the high court the execution or that that sentence is not it, it is not to perform and therefore this is the extra ordinary powers with the high court now with this let us start discussion this, this is just an introduction that in order to understand the uh, the process of appeal i have divided the entire chapter because as i have already told you there is no uh, one by one stages provided under the chapter of appeal like i say it start from 372 to 394 but uh, there is no such kind of provision provided when it is conviction when it is appeal in order to understand in order to easy understand these provisions i have divided this chapter in three parts that is process of appeal one appeal to the session court secondly appeal to the high courts and thirdly appeal to the supreme courts so so uh, of course these chapters uh, are again subdivided in different parts and therefore in order to understand easy manner let us discuss the uh, chapters in this uh, chronology but, but before that as i have already told you it's a statutory rights given to the the person or rather to the state government also or we call as aggrieved person whether it is a victim whether it is accused or some cases the state government when there is inadequate punishment now but there are provisions under the crpc because since it is a statutory rights appeal is not as as a right and therefore firstly firstly we will discuss when there is no appeal and 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 during the course of lecture uh, rather we have discussed when there is no appeal but now we are going to discuss in detail when there is no appeal since rather this is the first point we are going to discuss since uh, it's a statutory provisions laid under the crpc and or any other law because uh, appeal to the session court high court and supreme court either from the crpc or from the other law like say for instance if the conviction is under the electricity act then the electricity act has provided a special provision for the appeal because in in case of electricity act 2003 let us take the example the first instant court is not a judicial magistrate first class but it's a session court in that case appeal is directly lies to the high court because first instance court is a session court but in case of the offense of theft first instant court is a judicial magistrate first class if the judgment of conviction accurately is there then the aggrieved person may file appeal to the the session court and therefore it's a statutory rights provided and therefore when we call a statutory rights the appeal is not an, as a right it that is each and every judgment or each and every order cannot be uh, there cannot be an appeal against such order or judgment and therefore unless it is specifically provided by the law there cannot be provision for appeal and let us discuss what uh, what are those provisions and these particular rules are available to the first appeal now what is this first appeal say for instance first appeal means the first time that is if suppose the, the judgment or order is given by the judicial magistrate first class 
we file appeal to the session court. This is called the first appeal. However, judgment or the order is given by the session court. We made an appeal to the session high, high court. That is first appeal. So it, it is a question of fact. What is meaning of the first appeal? Depends upon the conviction. I'm sorry, the judgment. Which court passed judgment or which pass court passed an order? And therefore, the first section, so far as this chapter is concerned, section 372, it says no appeal lies unless otherwise provided. Rather, this is a general rule. What it means? Unless the law has provided, appeal should not be made except there is a provision made under the CRPC or time delivery. So this, this, this is the original provision under section 372. Now to this rule, of course we will discuss later on, there is one new provision has been inserted or added by the uh, legislature in the year 2009. It says provided that. Now this is what the victimology is, they provided that. Victim has a right to prefer an appeal against any order or judgment passed against the accused person. It, either it is a conviction or acquittal. Now, acquittal we can understand. Why conviction? Conviction, if the victims realize that the punishment given by the court is inadequate, then for, in, for, for enhancement of the punishment, victim can file an appeal. So this is new provision added under section 372. So by rule that is under section 372, they provided that no appeal lies unless statute is provided. And, and there are several case laws, of course we will get the ready material, there are several case laws which provided on this point. And therefore one of the, the Supreme Court has discussed in a very interesting case that right of appeal is not a natural or inherent rights. It's a rights expressly given by the statutes. So no one can claim as a fundamental right. It's a statutory rights. And therefore, it's always said appeal is a creation of the statutes. Now, 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 please bear in the mind, this segment is very important. Sometimes examiners like me may put the question simply by adding the word explain. Appeal is a creation of the statute. Explain. Or, or he may say, he may say, uh, there is no appeal, there is no provision of appeal unless statutory provided. Explain. The meaning that the answer is same, but most of the time students be confused. The answer is same, but the chronology is different. Why? Because it's not an inherent right. It's a right guaranteed by the statute. And therefore it said appeal is a creation of statute. And with this, let us see what are the other provisions. 372 I discussed, 375. This is a very interesting aspect. Like That's why I'm saying we are not going to discuss 372, 373, 370. No. Directly we are 372. Directly we come to the 375. When there is no appeal lies. 375 deals with the cases that when the accused plead guilty. If you remember, while discussing the trials where I have categorically mentioned that if the accused person plead guilty, then there is no provisions for the appeal. This is what the section 375 says. So it says, it says, it says, whatever stated under section 374, that's why it's a not standing clause. The, the accused has no right to file an appeal if he, if he accept the guilt, that is what we call as plea of the guilt. And, and no appeal lie. If, if, if the conviction is by the high court, conviction by the session court, conviction by the metropolitan magistrate, conviction by the judicial magistrate first class or the, the chief judicial magistrate first class or uh, uh, and and see uh, most importantly to this rule there is one exception and that exception of course we are going to discuss under section 376 if if instead of challenging the conviction now most of the times the smart lawyer do this aspect say for instance a, a warrant trial on the police report an accused person plead guilty as per that provisions and the court convict him. Subsequently, accused person realizes that he made a mistake. There is a bar under section 374. But if you clearly read section 375, it says it says there is no appeal to the under uh, against the plea of guilty, but except 376 that you can't challenge on the ground of the factual, factual aspect but you can challenge the plea of guilty on the ground of legality that is what section 376 says 
and therefore that's what i'm saying the smart lawyer even though it is a convicted even though accused person has accepted the guilt they may file appeal under section 370 stating that legally it is not correct correct why not legally correct let us give the example that if you remember under the plea of guilty it is stated that rather in session trial also it's a duty of the court to explain the charges against the accused person and not only this it has to read over and explain the accused person and after the court realizes or satisfied himself it has been understood by the accused person then in the remedy he can record the plea of guilt but however if the if the appellate in a, a accused person in appeal came with the case that the the court has not followed the due procedure established by law this will be the ground for challenging the plea of guilty that is what section 376 is provided and therefore even though there is no appeal like a uh, conviction then 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 also the provisions are being provided subject to the uh, application of the mind by the lawyer now come to the another aspect that is with reference to the 376 376 says not withstanding anything contained under section 374 in case of conviction by the court for the petty offences there shall not be an appeal there shall not be appeal of course up, up against the conviction by the accused person in case of the following cases now 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 the concept of the petty cases we have already discussed in a in a earlier trial section 253 if you remember that that aspect is totally different here because that is deal with the power of the magistrate to conduct the trial here the concept of the petty offences is something different that is that is here the conviction is there conviction is there by the court it's not a conviction on the plea of guilty it's a conviction after the trial but but the punishment which is awarded it comes under the petty now it depends upon the court say for instance if you go through the examples provided or the criteria provided under the uh, section 376 it says if, if the high court has convicted the accused person uh, uh, for the offense and it is imprisonment with an imprisonment of 6 month and the fine not exceeding 1000 rupees see the aspect which court i am not saying the judicial magistrate first class in case of judicial magistrate first class this is a perfect case of the appeal but in case of the high court this is considered as a petty matter because it's a high court and what is the criteria if the high court award the punishment for the fine not exceeding 1000 rupees or the imprisonment not exceeding 6 month then there is no appeal lies it will be considered as an petty offence i hope you understand so well this aspect this is in case of the appeal uh, i i'm sorry the high court not to the judicial magistrate first class same and secondly in case of the court of session or the metropolitan magistrate if the imprisonment is not exceeding 3 months or the fine is not exceeding the 200 rupees or both in such cases no appeal lies i am again repeating in case of the session court which includes additional session court assistant session court the metropolitan magistrate i am not using the word magistrate other one i am so talking about the metropolitan magistrate which includes the chief metropolitan magistrate also if the punishment they are awarding is 3 months that is not exceeding 3 months or the fine not exceeding 200 rupees or both in that case it will be considered as an petty offences and there would be no provisions of appeal and thirdly where it's a it's a punishment awarded by the judicial magistrate first class and what is the punishment it's the fine not exceeding 100 rupees please bear in the mind it's a fine exceeding 100 rupees but if he says 100 rupees and one day imprisonment then appeal lies please bear in the mind it uh, in case of the magistrate of the first class it's only the fine not an imprisonment in case of the better part magistrate the criteria is with the session court that is that is with the 200 rupees and the 3 months now similarly if if if, if the offense is under the 260 that is uh, the power is given at 260 and the court has that is judicial magistrate first class has awarded to 200 rupees then 
there is also no appeal lies that is that is a trial we have discussed two sixty that is summary trials so uh, again this again this there is no provision for appeal because these are considered as an as an pity of process however as we have discussed the earlier sections here the provision is most important it says it says provided that provided that appeal may brought against the sentence if the punishment is uh, the combined or it shall sentence is uh, uh, again again i have it's a it's a miscarriage of justice or or sometimes it may be happen the court may so the court may grant the punishment for this all this aspect now with this now the, this is what the first chapter says when there is no appeal lies let us go to the second aspect that is that is with the appeal to the session court that is which include the session additional session court assistant session court also uh, the provisions again i have already told you, uh, it is not the chronological product it is scattered in different different so we will discuss it and every and by giving the subtitles now session court is the highest court within the session division this is what what the characteristics of the uh, the session court and it's a uh, it's a the principal court within the district and thus there is by means of the appeal there is statutory provisions are provided that whenever any judgment is passed by the or order is passed by the lower court that is lower to the session court then the first appeal the first appeal lies to the uh, session court whether it is ordered by the us magistrate second class first class metropolitan magistrate or the uh, the chief metropolitan magistrate or in case of the chief judicial magistrate also and therefore uh, in order to understand the the appeal to the session court firstly we will discuss the first power of the session court that is with reference to the the section 373 section 373 deals with the uh, power of the session court what is this provisions under section 373 if any court has ordered the person to give the security or give the bond for keeping the good behavior in the society and such person refused neglected or he is aggrieved by that order now these powers and this order has been given under section 117 of the crpc sometimes especially uh, uh, in a election or some festival period the local authority that is the uh, exclusive magistrate may direct certain uh, what do you call the accused person or the person they are aware they are the uh, record offenders habitual offender they give the notice under section 117 that you have to give the bond for the good behavior under section 117 and against such order against such order if any accused person is aggrieved by such order or the direction given under section 117 then under 7373 such person can file the appeal to the session court uh, against the order passed by the the or the such kind of notice has been issued under section 117 so the first appeal is appeal against the secret directing secret to for the good, uh, keeping good good behavior that is section 117 and section 121 of the uh, crpc and secondly second appeal of course appeal against the conviction now again this particular chapter is subdivided in different different part especially section 374 sub clause 3 second category giri, that is appeal against the conviction now whose order whose conviction now we are filing the appeal to the session court section 374 sub clause 3 says that uh, the conviction if it is by the metropolitan magistrate or by the assistant uh, that i am sorry the uh, the judicial magistrate first class or by judicial magistrate second class then the accused person since it is a conviction the right is given to the accused person the accused person has a right to file to file an appeal to the session court or oh, in case of in case of the conviction or, or at the time of order of the conviction if the, uh, the the lower court that is the metropolitan magistrate or the judicial magistrate first class has order under section 325 
of the CRPC or director accused person to fulfill the bond under section 375 of the CRPC or certain direction has been given in to the accused person while convicting the accused person under section 360 that is the special provision under section CRPC uh, that accused may the lower court may release the accused person on admonition also admonition on the uh, on the assurance of good behavior on this order also the aggrieved person may file appeal under section 374 sub clause 3 to the session court so this is the second class or uh, second category of appeal firstly for the keeping of good behavior and secondly under section 374 sub clause 3 that is against the conviction firstly by the uh, conviction by the metropolitan magistrate or judicial magistrate first class or in some cases assistant session judge also or if there is an order under section 325 CRPC or order under section 360 of the CRPC. So this is second category. Thirdly, appeal against the uh, inadequacy of the sentence of acquittal. Now this is something different. So the second category of the first and second category of appeal is filed by the accused person. While third, third category of appeal to the session court that is appeal against inadequacy of the sentence or acquittal. Now these are the two categories. Now so far as acquittal is concerned, Appeal is either filed by the state government or as per the amendment under section 209, it is by the victim. And therefore, therefore, this category, this is the third category of appeal to the session court. So far as inadequacy or the acquittal is concerned, appeal can be filed by the victim or the state government. Let us discuss what is the provision first by the state government. Because state government is the aggregate party. Now, when he can file section 377 of the CRPC deals with this aspect which provide that uh, whatever provided uh, the uh, state government has a power that that in case of the sentence is awarded by the the lower court and the state government realize that that particular statement is inadequate it's not sufficient it's not justified sufficient no, I'm sorry it's not justified punishment to the accused person. The accused they deserve more punishment than under section 377. The, the, the state government may file appeal or the state government may direct the public prosecutor uh, to file the appeal to the either to the high court or to the session court. This is this is on the ground of inadequacy. Okay. So uh, in case of the uh, in case of the uh, the judgment given by the Judicial Magistrate First Class also, the state government may direct the public prosecutor to file appeal in the state government. I am not using the assistant public prosecutor because appeal has to file in the session court, there is a public prosecutor. Similarly, if there is an offence has been committed under the Delhi uh, Poli Special Police Establishment Act, then then the, the, the state government or the central government may direct. Because uh, if suppose there is an offence uh, against the CBI, in that case, CBI is the authority control under the central government or Delhi Public Special Force. Then, then it's not a state government, but central government also has a power to direct their special public prosecutor or the public prosecutor to prepare the appeal against the inadequate punishment. So, to against this, uh, these these are the powers given by the uh, legislation under Section 377 to the state government. Similarly, similarly. If the if victim now victim by an amendment 2009 victim has a right to prefer an appeal when when the victim realizes uh, that the punishment awarded by the court or that is the lower court is not sufficient is is inadequate punishment and accused again deserve more punishment than under the provision of section 372 that is what the provision has added the victim can file an appeal uh, to the session court. Similarly, uh, in case of the acquittal, section 378, in case of, so, in case of inadequate, 377 support court we have already discussed and the pros of section 372, in case of acquittal, again, it's a, it's a power of the state government under section 378. Same criteria is provided. If the, if the judgment of acquittal is by the judicial ministry first class, then the state government may direct the public prosecutor to file an appeal subject to the within limitation or within 90 days of the limitation act to the prepare an appeal to the session court or from the session court to the high court this is again the uh, acquittal say same is the provisions provided uh, uh, to the uh, victim also 
that the victim also has a power to file an appeal uh, against the, uh, the the acquittal because he is also uh, the aggrieved person against judgment of the uh, passed by the lower court. So this is this is what the the second criteria. First, uh, second criteria also we have finished. So far, the the provisions of the appeal to the session court is concerned. Now, come to the the third chapter that is the uh, appeal to the high court. Now, as I already told you, that the high courts and supreme court they are having extraordinary power rather than this session court. So far as the power of the appeal is concerned, because uh, one hand they have done the getting the statutory powers on the CRPC, and other hand they are having the the constitutional powers. The, that that provision that is the combined combination pro, combination of both the aspect we are going to discuss under this chapter. Now the first uh, appeal to the high court that is that is appeal from the conviction. Please bear in the mind when I use the word conviction, that means the trial is conducted by the session court. I am not saying the appeal from the uh, appeal. It's a, it's a appeal from the conviction. So the session court, additional session court or the assistant session court has conducted the trial and against that appeal lies to the high court. This is what the pros in under section 374. So it's a it's a trial court. Trial has been conducted by the uh, the the session court. It depends upon the offense and the 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 power is given by the schedule of the CRPC. Therefore, if the session court award the sentence more than seven years, then as of right under section 374, that is specifically uh, subclause two of section 374, which provides that appeal directly lies to the high court and. Uh, the, the High Court is the first appellate court so far as this particular matter is concerned. So, additional session court, if the pass order of sentence more than seven years, then appeal lies to the session court. It doesn't lie to the, the session court because the punishment is more than seven years. Additional and session court, they are equal footing, only the title is different. If they have passed the sentence, then appeal directly lost to the High Court. I'm talking about the appeal from the conviction. And therefore, the aggrieved person, of course, the aggrieved person means the accused person who has convicted. He may file appeal uh, within the statutory period to the, the High Court. This is what the provision under Section 372. There are there are se several judgments given by the Supreme Court and the Bombay High Courts. What is what is meaning of the, uh, the conviction? Uh, in what cases the power has to be used? In what are the criteria uh, which has to be accepted by the uh, appellate court or the high court while discussing because here we are not only discussing the statutory provisions but we are also discussing the constitutional powers so whenever the high court is discussing or uh, is dealing with the appeal uh, the high court or the judges of the high court has to consider not only statutory provisions but the constitutional provisions also especially article 21 and uh, the article 19 there are so many aspects which we are going to discuss during the course of lecture. Rather, there are several judgments. Some of the judgments I have quoted in my notes also. So, you will get the detailed knowledge. Uh, second aspect, so far the appeal to the High Court is concerned, appeal against the inadequate sentence. Now, uh, the moment we have uttered the word inadequate sentence, uh, first, first right is going to the, again, victim. That is the proviso under Section 372. Uh, in earlier, that is session court appeal also we have discussed this. If suppose there is a murder, uh, murder of the father and the matter is conducted by the session court and session court awarded seven years imprisonment or eight years imprisonment to the accused person and the family members, whether it is son, wife or whoever it may be, they are agreed with the judgment. They have a right to file an appeal to the high court. Uh, as a victim because the word victim includes the family members also. There are several judgments and uh, one or two judgments I have already quoted that they have a right because they are sufferer. They are depends upon the, the person who is no, uh, no more and therefore they have right if there is an inadequate punishment uh, awarded by the, the session court in the session trial then they can file the, the, the appeal to the high court. Similarly under section 377 so 377, 372 proviso by the victim, 377 by the again by the state government. Because if there is any inadequate punishment, 377 subclass 2 provides that 
the agrarian state government may direct may direct their public prosecutor in the high courts of course now now we are in the high courts to prepare an appeal within the statutory limits our appeal memo and 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 the appeal will be presented by the uh, the state the public prosecutor on behalf of the state government and the same criteria as in session court also that if it is appoints under the cpi or the delhi public police authority then the that central government may direct an appeal against that uh, particular inadequate punishment uh, uh, filed by the i'm sorry awarded by the session court now uh, as i already discussed there is new provisions has been added, added with reference to the uh, appeal uh, so for the offence of and sentence is awarded uh, under section 376 that is rape, uh, i'm talking about the ipc 376 376 a b c uh, d uh, d a d b in that case if the appeal is preferred to the to the high court then there is a special provision made this appeal has to be disposed of and the word is used shall so it's a mandatory to the appellate court within the 6 months so in order to give the speedy remedy to the victim uh, these special provisions are provided these particular provisions are not applicable to the uh, the um, ordinary appeals this is just an, a new as, uh, aspect uh, as you are aware due to the uh, unfortunate incidents happen in the delhi we call it nearby incidents and therefore after the nearby incidents especially after the report submitted by the verma committee these amendments are carried out along with the ipc evidence and the uh, the crpc also now uh, after this there are there are another category of the uh, of third category to the high court of that is appeals uh, from acquittal now uh, first right of course against acquittal is section 372 again proviso that is victim and 378 is most important what is this appeal against that acquittal who, who who may file against acquittal that is in adequacy you can understand again 378 uh, that is uh, the uh, the provisions are made that the state government who is an aggrieved party in this case they may file appeal to the high court against the acquittal by the i am not talking about the uh, appeal acquittal uh, in the trial i am talking about the trial in a trial if the acquittal is there uh, by the trial that is a trial court that is a session court then the state government may direct the public prosecutor to prepare an appeal to the high courts or in case of the uh, any other special machinery uh, that is delhi public act cbi all of the central government then central government may direct the uh, public prosecutor to prepare an appeal to the to the high courts again again the same rules are applicable the next that is the fourth aspect with reference to the appeals to the supreme court now as we have discussed and you are also aware that the supreme court of india is the highest appellate court jurisdiction having its extraordinary jurisdiction uh, again given by the constitution and the crp itself so first we will discuss the constitutional provision first and most of the people they, they they confuse on this aspect the first aspect that is the power of the supreme court uh, that is ordinary appellate jurisdiction now this is this is a very special aspect i am using the again word ordinary appellate jurisdiction especially article 134 now by this article supreme court is enjoying extensive jurisdiction of in appeal now this particular powers uh, the supreme court can enjoy not in all the cases and therefore it is not the case that each and every appeal which is lies to the high court will come to the supreme court no there is rather 134 will be deal as an uh, uh, barricades rather that it is a scrutiny machinery uh, it is classified which appeal should be lie or lies or not i'm talking about the ordinary appellate jurisdiction of the supreme court and therefore it's not each and every and therefore if you go through the article 134 sub clause 1 it says that <coughs> if the uh, the high court in appellate 
in a in a appeal that is what article 134.1 says reverse the judgment of acquittal and convict the accused person convict the accused person that to the death sentence or the award life imprisonment then appeal lies to the supreme that is what subclass one similarly subclass two is specifically provided that the same power that the uh, the, the it's a, it's a extraordinary powers given to the supreme court again if the imprisonment the high court has reversed the judgment and convict the accused person and with an imprisonment for the uh, more than 10 years then the appeal appeal goes to again to the supreme court and uh, there are there are several judgments uh, available uh, along with or uh, while dealing with this power the supreme court will deal with the supreme court enlargement of the criminal appellate jurisdiction act 1970 because this is a special legislation established by the parliament to the supreme court to deal with the criminal cases so uh, in this special uh, circumstances the supreme court can use its ordinary criminal jurisdiction and secondly secondly under section now this is this is statutory under section 379 uh, the appeal against the conviction by the high court uh, now i am using the word conviction again here uh, and this is this is i'm saying because this is the statutory rights where the high court uh, in a appeal if if he reverse the judgment of the acquittal and convict that accused person and sentence him to death sentence again uh, along with what 34 subclass 1 it has to be read uh, then appeal lies to the the supreme court of india this is this is what the similar kinds of provisions made under subclass 1 subclass a and b of the uh, 134 and subclass 2a and 2b of the uh, the what do you call the uh, indian constitution then come to the extra ordinary this is this is ordinary power now secondly extra ordinary uh, appellate jurisdiction of the supreme court that is with the uh, that is under article 136 now most of the students they are jumble uh, in moot court also rather whether to go under article 134 or to go 136 now i hope so far as 134 is concerned you are aware and 136 is something different this is extra ordinary power 134 is restricted only to Uh, the reverse of judgment. While in case of 136, it's a special. That's why I say 134 is a barricades. Uh, the, it's a choice given to the Supreme, Supreme Court. Not all appeal will be there. Where in case of the criteria under section, uh, I'm sorry, Article 136 is something different. Let us discuss what is that. Uh, under this article, the Supreme Court will also enjoy the uh, uh, up, the appellate jurisdiction. That is the highest jurisdiction of appeal, and It's not in regular form. Again, Article 136, and therefore it's a, it's a, it's called as SLP, Special Leave Petition. You see the wording itself, Special and Leave. That means uh, the it's not an as of right. It's a choice of the court. If the if the court has Supreme Court has granted the leave, then and then only Article 136 uh, will come into play. Otherwise, uh, it does not. A right give the rights to the accused person it's a choice absolute choice of the supreme court the supreme court of india within the fraction of second may may after hearing one or three second may throw this appeal and say that no merit is made on this particular extraordinary powers uh, mm-hmm. is with the supreme court under article uh, 136 is there and and therefore in short if you uh, categorize or distinguish between the the mm-hmm. extraordinary powers and the uh, ordinary powers of the supreme court then uh, under article 136 an appeal may lies even against the uh, interlocutory order also this is this is what the simplicity way i can say or under article 134 the final order is required so see please bear in the mind interlocutory means the order which is not directly uh, affected to the finality of the judgments or rights of the parties so this is what the scope of uh, section 136 whereas under 134 there has to be final judgments this is the this is the, uh, the best difference between the 134 and 136 so uh, even if there is interlocutory order you can go to the 136 if there is a final order so so far as 134 is concerned there has to be the final order this is the major difference and and again again 
under Article 136, it's an appeal under against any court. This is what again the major difference. Whereas, 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 uh, so far as Article 134 is concerned, it's a, it's a, it's an appeal against the order of the High Court. Please bear in the mind, and that to the final order, not an interlocutor order. So, uh, I hope you understand uh, the basic difference between uh, 143 and uh, uh, 140. I'm sorry, 134 and 136 of the uh, the Indian Constitution and the power of the Supreme Court. Apart from this, uh, there are there are so so these are the these are the basic uh, provisions so far as the appeals is concerned. Uh, I know it's a, it's a very lengthy aspects, but by classifying this, that is where I categorize the four aspects. Firstly, when there is no appeal lies, then we discuss the uh, the power of the session court, that is we are divided into four parts. Power of the high court again divided into three parts, and power of the supreme court we are divided into two parts. Uh, just to simplify it. See, it's a, it's a very important aspect, and each and every student uh, uh, should understand this. I know it's a lengthy, it's a technical, but if you go through the notes and uh, this particular uh, video recording, then you will understand this. Uh, I hope I have tried my best level to understand you people. Uh, this will stop here, and we'll proceed for the next lecture.